Okay, so once the, the model is compiled and loaded, uh, one interesting thing that, that happens is that the, the software knows in which folder your model was that you compiled is. And then it, it tries to find if there is any SCADA interfaces saved in that folder. And that is the case right now uh, of this uh, unit test example from the microgrid library. So we can see here on top that there, it found one SCADA panel in the model directory. So what we're going to do is to click on that uh, button to, to, to open the, that SCADA, specific SCADA. So this is the SCADA, a very simple SCADA for a very simple model, but that is very uh, interesting and useful uh, for us. Um, at first, we're looking into this uh, diesel genset uh, block. Uh, it's actually a widget called uh, sub panel, uh, which means that there are widgets inside that block. And to access those widgets, the only thing we need to do is to double click on, uh, on this block. So that's what I'm going to do. So if I double click, uh, I'm sent to this inner page. We can see here that we're inside that block and if we want to go back to root, we can click on root on the top. But we're, we're staying inside for now. Um, I'm pressing this button, button on the top or you could press F11. Uh, the idea is that I, I will put the, uh, the, my SCADA interface in full panel so that, that we can see it better. Uh, so I'm pressing the button. Um, and then you can zoom in, pressing control and scrolling uh, uh, the mouse. Okay, put it back. No. Okay. Um, and now in, in this panel, uh, the simulation is not running yet. And one way that you can actually start the simulation once you have this panel open, uh, the the the, the actually the full screen, is to click on the play button on the, the bottom of the screen. If you were in, in that previous window, you would have a, a, another play button uh, much bigger than this, but you can use this one on, on the bottom right of, of this, on the screen to start the simulation. So I'm clicking on that, and now we can see that the simulation is running, uh, but we're not seeing anything on the, well, we're not seeing much things uh, yet on the from the simulation because the diesel gen set is still off. So the first thing I'm doing right now is I'll, I will turn the gen set on and to do that I'm going to use this widget uh, called gen and I'm toggling it to on. So when we do this uh, we can see that uh, it speeds up to nominal which is 1800 RPM. We can see on the top widgets uh, the, also to nominal voltage, 480 volts. Uh, and we can also see the, the speed measurement and the terminal voltage measurements here on these trace graph widgets. Also, what, what is the active power, reactive power and power factor of this diesel gen set. It's interesting to notice uh, by looking into this sync check widget that uh, that the diesel gen set is not in sync with the grid. Um, since the, the arrows are, are not in the same position or, or the phases are, are not in the same position, this means that uh, the diesel gen set is not in sync. And the, the diesel gen set right now is operating in standby. So it's not trying to sync to the grid. It's just, it's just like prepared. If, if you give command for it to sync, then it will sync. But before we do that, well, I, I want to show you that you can actually, even on standby, you can actually start to play with this diesel gen set. For example, you can change the, the speed reference by changing this slider widget. So for example, if I change it to 1731, we can see that it actually now followed uh, that reference and that the phaser is not, like, it's not, uh, since it's on a different speed than the, the grid, then it's not fixed in the same position. We, we can see that. So if we put back to 1800, 
we can see that the, the red arrow will uh, get closer to a stop and in this case by pure luck <laughs> the, the diesel gen set almost synced uh, it's almost in sync uh, the same thing I could do with the, the voltage so I could change the, the voltage reference and see that it follows and uh, we can see that it it affected the, the synchronization a little bit and that's that's normal so I will change the the voltage reference back to 490 or, or 80 which is the nominal and by luck again it's uh, very well synchronized so if if I come here to this operation mode and change it to grid following uh, it will just like see that it's in sync and it will close very quick so that's what I'm going to do so it synced and it closed we can see now that the power is ramping and, uh, and the reactive power is, is also changing uh, and now because of this control mode here this control mode widget which is set to power to PPF which is active power and reactive power and, and power factor control it's following these two uh, references so for example right now it's already stable at uh, 0.5 megawatts or 500 kilowatts so I can change this set point for example to 1.0 here that's what we're doing and we'll see on the trace graph widgets how it's changing how it's following that new set by doing the same thing uh, on the power factor reference we can change the the power factor uh, and of course the, the reactive power so if we do this, we'll see the effects on both reactive power and, and power factor while the active power is kept constant. And if we want to change the, the power factor, right now we're using, if we, if we look into this widget, the PF mode, we're using uh, the lag mode, which means that uh, uh, the load would be inductive. We're providing inductive, uh, inductive power, reactive power. Uh, so we we can actually change it to lead, uh, and we see immediately now that uh, the the reactive power signal will change. So now instead of positive, it will go to negative. Uh, we see some oscillation here on the power factor, but it it's going back to that set setting point of 0.93 that we set. So okay, the diesel gen set is operating well and uh, we, we could understand a little bit how to, to use this SCADA interface that is already prepared, that you, you have it in your hands to use in whatever model you need. Uh, but I still want to show you one very interesting thing uh, of, of this SCADA that will help you in your future models. So I'm clicking here on, on the root button on top of the screen so that we, we go back to the root. And now instead of double clicking on this sub panel widget, I'm clicking with the right button. And I'm going to this uh, properties option and I'm clicking it. Uh, so this, this properties of the widget open uh, where we could change the name of, of this widget but what we're interested here is the local namespace because in this local namespace we use uh, these variables here to define some paths and these are important so that you can see the correct values the, so that your SCADA interface is connected to the component inside your model so basically if you create your model, you have to know the, the name of the diesel gen set that, uh, on your model and then you can copy and paste here. Uh, you have to know the name to, to those inputs block and output so that you can copy and paste it here so that it links uh, to, to your model and you, you have a working scale. So it's very simple, just three um, three paths that you need to change 
And the other thing is that if you do some changes in the parameters of the this gen set or in other components of the microgrid library, uh, some of these parameters are used uh, for the measurements, for showing, displaying these measurements on SCADA. So you need to, to give them here also. So if my this gen set is of point uh, of 2.2 MVA, I have to come here and put that my my power is 2.2 MVA. If I know that it's, if I set it to 6 hertz uh, frequency, then I have to come here and put it to 6 hertz so that I can read uh, the correct measurements. Uh, by doing this simple step, you can reuse this model, this SCADA interface, uh, as many times as you want in a very uh, simple and quick way.